Number one, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency, and they don't want you to realize the currency is failing. So what do you see? You saw spot do a triple top, and then on Friday, it was at a quadruple top. And then if you look at the action, because it actually broke out and made new highs, and especially in the futures market, and then all of a sudden, all these short sellers come out to whack it below. So we have to see if that breakout is pervasive. But I, my guess would be yes. And my guess also, well, it's not a guess. It just always happens. There was, um, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I have to go back and look on the chart. It was a gap up, which means that the price of gold closed here. And then the next morning it opened up here, right? And then it right. continued up to go to new highs. Well, whenever you have a gap, and I think this is so important for viewers to understand, because whenever you have a gap, that gap must be filled. Either higher or lower, doesn't really matter, but there's there's that gap. So number one, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency, and they don't want you to realize the currency is failing. So once it broke to those new levels, it had to be whacked by the central bank minions, at least in terms of the U.S. dollar. Technically, I can't tell you when it's going to fill the gap, but it wouldn't surprise me to see it go down now and fill that gap before it goes to much higher prices. And I think that that's critically important for those people that are looking at positioning into asset protection gold because there's all different kinds of gold. And some gold is impacted more by the spot market than others. Um, so, I mean, it broke out and that was from a triple top and that is major. Those things don't happen often or easily and technically. Right. Banks are in such a precarious position and I think that they will likely a major bank failure would likely trigger that Fed pivot that's making the the, the uh, interest rates drop and the markets rise right now. Uh, but I think we're seeing actually a shift in debanking, you know, and I think that more money is going privately. And, and if you look at what the banks have been doing this isn't really new news. They used to be market makers. In other words, support the treasury market, support the stock markets. But that's shifted to private hands, which is also where a lot of money is now shifting. So the deal making, the, the money that the banks used to make on creating a lot of those deals is seriously in jeopardy with the rates where they are right now because everything is starting to slow down. and. Um, you know, will we see a Fed pivot next year? Probably. Of course, what's going to happen to inspire that Fed pivot is going to be, it could be a bank failure, but it could be an explosion in the debt markets and the treasury markets. I mean, there are a lot of black swans that are flying all around. I do say that. And the interesting thing is, whether you're an insured depositor or an uninsured depositor, the FDIC has less money now in its coffers uh, in the diff fund to pay for failing banks than they did back in March and April when we experienced the, the kickoff of the bank failures with the regional banks. So the insurance, I mean, when did they do that? Well, they did that back in the 30s with all the other bank failures. And it was just about perception management, getting you to think that everything is okay and in reality, things are not okay. And I think that this is the lead up to watch the balance. I don't think they were ready for it in March and April, but I think they've been getting ready for it because there's no money in the diff fund. I think we may see a lot more glitches. And so I think it's absolutely critical. I think it's critical for people to have a plan and execute it. And, and you know, part of that plan is having some cash, even though it's garbage, it's still the recognized tool of barter outside of that banking system. Do I think we could see a bail-in this year? Maybe toward the end of the year. I don't think at first, 
but maybe toward the end of the year would okay. not surprise me because I'm looking at the opportunity that they had. And remember, it wasn't supposed to impact uh, the public. Right. The banks were supposed to put more money into that diff fund to yeah. bail out the banks, but it's lower. The most current report is showing that it's even worse and less than what they had when Chair Powell and Janet Yellen bailed out the banks. Don't call it a bailout, but they do have that on their books. Uh, bailed out the banks in March. So bank failures, uh, bail-ins, treasury market, and accessibility are, I think, going to be really interesting this coming year. Well, even when you're looking at those nations that are embracing the dollar, it's because our currency is devaluing slower than their currency and the dollar is still more recognized you know r rather than really understanding that this is good money and and this stuff is just you know i know people don't like it when i call it garbage but <laughs> it is real it is really garbage um and if you look at venezuela you know their currency has more value as a napkin for an empanada, and we're all going there. So even though there are countries that are trying to tie their currency or their economies to the dollar, it's about perhaps generating some level of confidence, public confidence, but it's really only because it's losing value more slowly. But make no mistake about it. You see it every time you go to the grocery store or you buy anything. The dollar's value is going away. And it doesn't matter how many you have. It matters what you can convert it into, what you can use as a tool of barter. And that all goes back to the public and the public confidence because every other layer of confidence Bank to bank, central bank to central bank, market to central banks. The last level of confidence in this system is the public confidence. And that's why it is so critically important to hide what's really happening in the real gold market, in the physical only market, which has been making new highs, well, in especially up at that one per percenter level, the rarities. That's all-time highs, all-time highs. Whereas when you're looking at the more normal collectible market, which still is a physical-only market, that had its breakout a while ago, right? So yep. for the spot market to now be breaking out, it is all going to get more visible by the public. And you can say, you know, bye-bye, because once that confidence is gone, there is no more confidence left. There's your hyperinflationary depression. There's your reset into the new system. And what are you going to have to protect yourself?